from an advisor's standpoint, th there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, people are feeling not at all comfortable for the final few months of the year. What exactly is the setup in your mind? And, and should investors be worried and making moves in their portfolio because of it? Okay, so for me, I think I've taken the approach of being cautiously optimistic. Uh, yes, people are worried, but I don't see anything that makes me think, hey, you need to make significant shifts in your portfolio. Uh, we're doing things differently now than, frankly, we've been unable to do for the last 10 or 15 years, and that's actually get uh, some ballast from the fixed income section of the portfolio. So we're we're making those shifts. We're, we're rolling into more treasuries, more floating rate funds, uh, so that that portion of our client portfolios is actually getting them the 5% uh, that we count on from a long-term perspective. So, so, so Eric, th that's an interesting point of view because he, he's not the only one, Lee, uh, about being cautiously optimistic given everything that we've seen so far build up this year already. I, I wonder, is there a setup in your mind that, that, that maybe is too optimistic or not optimistic enough about the balance of the year? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Dominic. Yeah, I think if, uh, as we see a little bit this morning with the with the bond yields, you're seeing there is a concern that the numbers are going to come in stronger than expected, and that could lead to a, a sell-off in uh, in fixed income. And that would be, I think, a minor jolt to the markets, because right now the soft landing is the consensus, and, and we're seeing you know equities continue to act strong. And so if we see a hotter-than-expected number this morning, uh, that view that the Fed is on a pause could change and you could see more volatility hit the markets. Uh, I mean, Eric, this has been, it's pretty evident. It's been the magnificent seven. It's been mega cap technology and media that's been driving things. What's curious about it is that these companies have seen expanded valuations in a rising interest rate environment. There's a bit of a disconnect there. Is that going to get resolved anytime soon, or, or can we continue to see multiples expand in the face of higher rates? Yeah, that's a big concern. I mean, the massive difference between what growth equities and that magnificent seven are performing versus the broad markets. If you look at the value, you know, the Russell 1000 value is up only 5%, and the growth, that, the growth, uh, the Russell growth is up over 30. You worry that um, valuations are so high in growth that. Uh, we could see a lot more volatility because that, you know, we're going to see uh, cooling in that sector. And so I would like to see a lot more of a broad based uh, market returns, especially for equities, where you get these other sectors that have done nothing uh, perform better. Lee, what's also curious right now is uh, amid those rising rates, we've also for the first time in maybe a generation or so, have a situation where there is an alternative to stocks and even bonds. You can just put your money in cash, make about four and a half to five and a half percent, depending on which money market fund you're in. How many clients of yours feel as though cash is just a good place to be because they can just make it without taking any risk whatsoever? It's a pretty significant portion of our clientele, particularly those that are in retirement. Uh, we work with some, uh, you know, uh, clients that have significant accounts, and they're kind of going. We were forced into equities, uh, again, for you say about a generation, but now they're looking at a situation where finally, after 15 or 20 years uh, with where inflation is currently, uh, they can have safe money that is above the rate of inflation. So as long as we continue to see 3.3%, uh, 3.2% year over year inflation, and they can continue to clip along at four and a half, five percent 5%, they're happy. It's a lot less stressful for them. Uh, and so then our job becomes, hey, listen, let's find some opportunities to uh, boost things on the equity side, but protect from the downside so that uh, for those clients, we are eyeing that Mac, Mac 7 in case there's a, a bit of a prick and those things uh, drop precipitously. All right. And before we let you go, just one quick word to each of you. Lee, your favorite part of the market? Uh, private credit. Private credit. Eric Bailey, your favorite part of the market right now? I see value in uh, dividend equities. Uh, they're cheap. Valuations are cheap. These companies have strong balance sheets, and I think that's a good place to, uh, to invest right now.